When are you going to transfer the money? Send me ten thousand bucks right now. That's what my mother-in-law said on the phone. I'm in the middle of my husband's funeral. That's none of my business. She told me to transfer the money immediately. I ignored her and hung up the phone. And she came directly to me. But she was surprised. What the hell is this? My name is Stephanie. I am a 34-year-old office worker. I'm currently dating someone. His name is Alfred, and he is the same age as me. I met him through work. He works for a client of the company I worked for, and we often do business with each other. Basically, we had a serious business conversation. We were both serious about our work, but then he would unexpectedly throw in some of his jokes. It was funny, and we would laugh with each other. Of course, we were doing our jobs properly. Well, one of us makes a joke at the right moment, and the atmosphere instantly relaxes, and the deal proceeds in a rather good state. It was a drinking party that brought us close together. There was a time when the companies where my husband and I both work had a large-scale project. Of course, my husband and I participated in the project, as did many other employees. We all worked together to make the project a success. And a big party was held as part of the action. We exchanged personal contact information, and we started to keep in touch with each other, going out for drinks, going out on dates, and so on. We have been dating for about two years now, and we are still in love and have fun every day. We're both independent because we both focus on our jobs, and I think we have a good chemistry. Then one day, he proposed to me. I can't imagine my future with anyone but you. You're such a part of my life now. Will you marry me? Yes, I'd love to. And so we are married. I'm so happy that I was going to marry the man I love. After that, we went to meet each other's parents, and he looked a little unhappy. What's wrong? Did something happen? No. Actually. There's something I wanted to tell you. I've explained to you before that my parents are divorced, right? I've actually been sending money to my mom every month since I started working for the company. I see.、Oh, yeah, about thousand a month. What? That much? Yeah. But of course, I'm not going to bother you after we're married, since we're going to live together as a couple. I thought I should let you know in advance. I see. He only briefly explained that his parents are divorced due to his mother's infidelity. His father took him in. Even so, he still saw his mother sometimes, and kept in touch with her after he entered the workforce. His mother has asked him to send money to her because she is now single and has a hard time making ends meet. Even though his mother betrayed them, he stayed with her until he was in the third grade of junior high school. And his mother used to cook and feed him every day, raising him with love and care. When I was playing softball, she always came to watch her team practice. She prepared orange juice for everyone and drove us to the games. My dad was too busy with work to spend time on those things, so I owe a lot to my mom. People might say that he's bad situation where he is being robbed, but still he was treated well by his mother in the past. He feels he owes his mother a debt of gratitude, and wants to repay it. That's why he keeps sending money to her. Thank you for telling me, Advance. I'll do what I can to help. Thank you, Stephanie. I was surprised by his story, but I still wanted to respect his wishes as much as I could. Fortunately, I also make a good amount of money. He says he won't bother me, but if it comes to it. I'm willing to pay for it. Then I went with him to his mother's house to tell her of our marriage. Alfred, it's been a long time. Hi, mom. So that's your fiance. Nice to meet you. I'm Stephanie. Alfred's been very good to me. His mother was very nice. Alfred is finally getting married. I was worried because he never talked about it. Stephanie. Thank you for marrying my son, Mom. 
Don't make it sound like you were taking pity on me. Oh, because when I was your age, you were already in the ninth grade. That's a pretty late marriage for me. His mother had Alfred when she was 19, according to the story. She's 53 now, so she looks very young. Well, she seemed to spend a lot of money on beauty, so she looks young. But after I met his mother, I went to see his father. His father was a very serious and sincere man, and I thought that Alfred was like his father. After meeting with each other's parents, we started making preparations for the wedding. However, when I sent the wedding invitation to his mother, it came back circled as absent. Why aren't you gonna be there, mom? He asked immediately on the phone. Because that man is coming too, right? I can't go. By that man, I mean his father. Well, they're divorced because of her infidelity. So it's natural that he is difficult to meet. I thought it was a little suspicious because she refused to attend the meeting with both of her families. In the end, no matter how much he tried to convince her, his mother didn't want to come to the wedding. Then he and I got married. It was a very happy and joyful wedding with many people were celebrating. His mother did not come to the wedding in the end, but we received a congratulatory message. Then Alfred and I started living together. We work together and share the housework, and I think we have a good balance in our lives. He was raised by his father since high school, so he himself was often in charge of cooking. So he can cook well and has a lot of dishes he can make. His cooking is very good, and I think he can cook some dishes better than me. And we had a good time on holidays, going on a trip or drive. My husband continued to send money to my mother-in-law even after a marriage. Basically, the monthly remittance was about thousand bucks. But apparently, my mother-in-law had recently injured her back and became unable to work. Therefore, my husband received a call from her asking him to increase the amount of money he sends home. He was worried about my mother-in-law, so he decided to increase the remittance. Therefore. He increased it from thousand to fifteen hundred a month. My husband works for a large company, and he has a high income. However, it must be quite difficult for him to send fifteen hundred a month to his mother. I decided to pay more for our living expenses. I worked hard, and my income was high, so it was no problem for me. But my mother-in-law got carried away and asked him to send more money. It's a very hard life. I'm not working right now. You know that, right? I have to go to the hospital too. Maybe so, but I can't afford to send more money either. Are you saying you're abandoning your mother? No, that's not what I'm. Then send more money to me for my sake. My mother-in-law begged my husband repeatedly, and he ended up increasing her allowance to two thousand. It was okay to send her money up until then, but now I think she's asking too much. Well, he still owes his mother for raising him, and she said she had no one else to rely on, so my husband couldn't give up on my mother-in-law, although he was worried about it. So my husband worked hard at his job, and got a promotion as a result. This has helped to raise her salary, and for the time being. Life has not been so difficult. However, I thought that we would be able to afford it if we could reduce the amount of money we send home. So my husband and I went to my mother-in-law's house to ask her to reduce her allowance. Oh, Alfred and Stephanie, what's up? My mother-in-law greeted us with a smile, but when we went to talk to her about reducing her allowance, she immediately became grumpy. What? Why? Well, it turns out that two thousand is a little too much. So, you don't care what happens to your mother. I knew you would take his side. I'm not taking his side or anything, you know. Then why don't you help me? We have our own life. We might have a baby. We want to save as much as money we can for when that happens. Instead of something that you are unsure of, 
Shouldn't you be helping people in need now instead? I'm in financial trouble. That's how my mother-in-law insisted. You said you have back pain. I think you can do at least some desk job. I already told you I can't work. So help me. That's how angry my mother-in-law is. My husband and I were both exhausted by the situation. Is there any way out of this? I decided to go to the bathroom for a change. It was then that I noticed that the door to the room next to the bathroom was slightly ajar. I glanced in, and there was something that surprised me. What is that? I glanced toward it. At least she didn't notice. I quietly went into the room and took pictures of what was inside. Then I went to the bathroom and came back to the living room, pretending that nothing happened. In the end, our attempt to reduce her allowance failed, because my mother-in-law did not approve of it. After we returned home, I showed the picture to my husband. Could this be my mom's room? Actually, it was just open when I went to the bathroom, and I took photos of some things from there. Would you look at this one, and this one? What? Aren't these old brand name stuff? That's right. And they're all new releases. So you're saying my mom was a lot of brand name stuff? I guess so. My husband was red faced and angry. I was sending money to mom because she was having a hard time making ends meet. I guess that means she's spending all this money I was sending her. Can't forgive her. I won't send money to her anymore. It's only natural that he would say that. My husband was sending money to my mother-in-law to protect her livelihood, not to allow her to live extravagantly. I agreed with him. Soon after that, he stopped sending money to her. Then, as expected, my husband received two phone calls from my mother-in-law. Hey. I haven't received this month payment yet. What's going on, Mom? I won't send money anymore. What? What are you doing? I'm saying I can't do it anymore. If you don't like it, stop being extravagant and sell your brand name goods. My husband sat and hung up. Then my mother-in-law came to our house. Sent me money. I only bought them because they happened to be on sale. There were many other brand name items. Anyway, I'm not sending you any more money, so please go home. My husband kicked her out without question. But after that, my mother-in-law kept coming back to ask for money, so we decided to move out. I can't trust her anymore. I didn't think she was that bad. She was so persistent that we hired a detective agency to investigate her. Then we found out a surprising fact. My husband was completely fed up with my mother-in-law, so we moved out of the house so that my mother-in-law would not assault us. Soon after that, my mother-in-law called me. My husband had already blocked her calls, so now she was coming to me. Then my husband and I came up with an idea. A few days later, I finally answered my mother-in-law's phone. Hey. When are you going to transfer the money? Do you know how many months it's been? Five months. Five months. How can you expect us to send you two thousand a month for five months? Send me ten thousand bucks quickly. I then told my mother-in-law, "I'm in the middle of my husband's funeral." What? Funeral? Yes. My husband just recently passed away. Then my mother-in-law said something surprising. That's none of my business. What? He just transferred the money. Are you really saying that? Is money more important than your son's funeral? Of course, money is more important. Even though you had an affair, he felt indebted to you for raising him, so he sent money to you even after he entered the workforce. He also told me about the time when he played softball. He said that you always drove the car and supported his team at practices and games. When I explained this, my mother-in-law snickered. He had it all wrong. I wasn't doing it for him. 
but it was because the coach of the softball team at the time was a good-looking guy his age. He didn't know it, but the coach and I were having an affair. Oh no! I thought my mother-in-law was an arsehole. I don't care what you do, but can you please transfer the money to me as soon as possible? He was well paid, and I'm sure he has a lot of money in his inheritance. Enough. We're in the middle of the funeral at a place called Madison Farrell Home. I will wire you the money. What? You don't have the authority to decide that. Just transfer the money. I ignored her and hung up. Then my mother-in-law came directly to me. Hey, I'm here because you didn't transfer the money. My mother-in-law came to me with a loud voice, and she was surprised with her eyes wide open. What? What does this mean? So you came. What? Afraid? And my mother-in-law looked around at the people there with a pale face. There were several people there, all of whom had been tricked by my mother-in-law into giving her money. I asked the detective agency to investigate, and they found out about that. Just recently, they had lost contact with my mother-in-law, and so there was no way to get her to return the money. So my husband and I came up with a plan to call my mother-in-law here. I expected her to come to the funeral, but I didn't expect her to talk like that. As a result, my mother-in-law came, but the damage to my husband must have been immeasurable. However, my husband seemed to be rather relieved. I now understand that I was not important to my mother, so I'm going to stop caring about her too. I want you to give back the money you owe these people, and the money you took from us. That's impossible. Okay, then we'll have to go to the police. The police? Yes, because what you're doing is stealing. Now you are moving in with some young guy and paying for him. That's what we found out. We can talk to that guy if you want. Don't, don't bother Edward. I feel sorry for you. You can either go to the police or you can give the money back. Just make a choice. My mother-in-law slumped down on the floor, her face pale. She finally gave up and chose to return the money. We all went to my mother-in-law's house to prevent her from running away and retrieved all the brand-name goods. We immediately sold them and turned them into money. My mother-in-law first used the money to pay back the people to whom she owed money, but it was still not enough to cover the money that my husband had been sending her. So he contacted a certain person. It was my mother-in-law's brother. Her brother runs the family's auto body shop. We explained the situation to him and asked him to put my mother-in-law to work. He had always been very fond of my husband. And he always did whatever my husband asked. And this time, my mother-in-law had done something terrible, so he said that he is responsible for punishing his sister, and forced her to come out and help him with the family business. My mother-in-law tried to escape many times and moved into her young boyfriend's house. When my husband and my mother-in-law's brother went to talk to the guy named Edward, he immediately threw my mother-in-law's belongings out of the house. Saying that he didn't want such a troublesome old woman. To me, she was just like Matron, who gave me money. My mother-in-law was shocked to hear that from the guy to whom she had paid a lot of money. So my mother-in-law's brother took her out and put her to work to make sure she couldn't run away from home. In exchange of giving my mother-in-law food and shelter, she made sure that all the money she earned went to my husband. Things are going well for now, but my husband and I will continue to keep a close eye on my mother-in-law because she might do something wrong in the future. I will continue to be close to my husband and spend happy days as a married couple.